The Miao, the sixth most numerous of China's 56 ethnic groups, lived in relative isolation in Guizhou for thousands of years and continue many of the customs and traditions of their forefathers. Silverwork and embroidery are interwoven into Miao life, from birth, through marriage and even onto death. And now the Miao are using these traditional crafts to improve their lives. Wu Shui Gen is a national inheritor of intangible cultural heritage. He comes from a long line of silversmiths and works out of a tiny studio attached to his house. Like so many people across the country, Wu has watched countless friends and neighbours leave the village in search of better paid jobs. He hopes silversmithing will offer the young a reason to return. Ninety-eight percent of the 168,000 people who live in Taijiang identify as Miao. The county has almost no commercial farming. The main sources of income are tourism and traditional crafts. I'm here in Shidong Town, which is in Taijiang County in Guizhou Province. In this county alone, there's just over 26,000 people that live under the poverty line. And here in this village, they're well known for their silverware, which shows that poverty alleviation is about more than just economics, but also about cultural preservation too. Almost all the silversmiths in the village have apprenticed under Wu. The skill has helped them craft a way out of poverty. This morning at the market in Shidong, Wu Jiangping, one of Wu's apprentices, earned nearly 10,000 yuan. In addition to training apprentices, Wu Shui Gen also teaches at a local university. One student, Pan Shu Shui, is a master silversmith himself and has two apprentices at his studio in Ma Liao. Pan sells his wares online. His studio handles orders totaling nearly 200,000 yuan a year. People like Wu and Pan are keeping silver work alive. Their high standards set their products apart from mass-produced items. And, thanks to the internet, they receive orders from all corners of the country, and sometimes even beyond. Any Miao girl deft enough to thread a needle is taught how to sew, and they are as fluent in the symbols and colours they stitch as any spoken language. Gu Lan Hua, village secretary of Mei Xiang, is one of Guizhou's poorest villages. She is an embroiderer. In 2013, the local government started a poverty relief initiative to teach women ways to make money from their embroidery. Gu joined the programme in 2015. She went on to establish a cooperative with neighbouring villages, which has trained 800 people. Her authority on embroidery, coupled with her business acumen, has helped Meixiang Cooperative secure international contracts from the US, Germany, Switzerland, generating annual sales of more than 1 million yuan. More than 2,000 kilometers away from Beijing, 
the leaders of Guizhou must implement the decisions made by the central apparatus. One of those directives is to eliminate poverty by 2020. The party team must walk a fine line, improving the lives of the locals while maintaining and supporting their defining cultural traits. Zhao Kai Ming is one of almost 800,000 experienced party officials dispatched to underdeveloped areas to improve governance and assist poverty relief. The task is daunting. Topping 把我们的优秀的传统文化更好地弘扬起来，传承下去。Over the past 30 years, over 700 million Chinese have found a way out of poverty. Over the past 30 years, over 700 million Chinese have found a way out of poverty. Industrialization, opening up, and reform have changed people's fortunes drastically. But 40 million people, around 3% of the population, remain below the poverty line. President Xi Jinping has declared that not a single family living in poverty should be left behind. And this is where party officials like Zhao step in. They must work for and with local communities on measures that suit the local conditions. China is fiercely protective of the diversity of its culture. So officials are determined to find ways of using cultural resources to end poverty. In Guizhou, that means apprenticeships, infrastructure and financial support. During my time in Guizhou, I've met craftsmen and women that work in silver and embroidery, using techniques and processes that have been passed down from generation to generation. These crafts were once peddled from village to village, but now, thanks to the internet and online shopping, these craftsmen and women have audiences and buyers the world over. And it really goes to show you that poverty alleviation here in China is more about elevating people. It's actually about maintaining traditions and culture.